All right, we're getting started with uh, Tazrin the Infinite. I hope I said that right. Um, Mr. Reclining on the big old Necron chair man himself. I've already primed this in black with the auto primer, but I left ink in my airbrush. So right now all those parts are soaking. So I didn't do a black uh, base coat with my Vallejo primer. So I'm just taking some of the Pro Acryl laying in black for my base metallics. I've got an older Series 7 here, so don't be afraid of the way I'm treating the brush, because I am being rather rough currently. The scheme for this is a custom one. It is a uh, dark bolt gun, so we're going to do a non-metallic uh, bolt gun for the main bodies. Got some dust and debris kicked up on kind of a nice uh, red base. And then green accents for the shoulder pads and probably the, the scales. And after the green, it will be bronze, non-metallic. So like a heavy red, coppery bronze that we're going to do for the accent armor plates here and there and a very dusty dusty base so I'm gonna finish up doing this I know it's boring to watch but it's something I can put on the screen while I'm giving the description oh yeah and the energy is like a fire it's like a a red glowy energy so that should be should be cool for the staff and this of course this is a fine cast model so it is like layered layered with issues um, took much longer than normal to put together I wish that they would make new models for some of these characters, get away from the fine cast, but I think that is a sentiment that is shared by a lot of people that are out there. Maybe one day they'll actually do it. Alright, so here's our non-metallic metal bolt gun recipe, or, well, here's the example, and this is what we're going to be applying over the, the figure. I'm going to go ahead and do his rib cage for you so you guys can see how I am mixing it, but it's a combination of the off-white, um, where's the name of that? There we go, light turquoise, and then the, a Pro Acryl Black or any other black. The Pro Acryl Black is just a little bit uh, thinner um, with decent coverage. Uh, so starting out with a mix of the turquoise and black as our first layer, and as I always say with non-metallics, once you have that in, you know where to put your colors. So with this rib cage, it's going to be one of the brightest points of the model because it's a big round object. So these highlights are going to be very broad on the rib cage. And the trick with getting the non-metallic bolt gun look is to be a little more sparing with your highlights. And we have this kind of off gray, almost lead looking uh, tone and a very strong blue undertone with the turquoise in there. We mix a little bit more turquoise in for our second layer. Here. This is going to go all the way to the top. Again, layer-based painting. I will cover up most of my previous work, but that first layer that I put on acts as like the coloring book for me. It shows me where I need to put my, my next colors. My next layer. Alright, and now is where we start adding our off white. We see it grays it out a good bit. It looks a lot bluer on the uh, screen than it is uh, in real life, so keep that in mind. But that's our steel uh, bolt gun. color that we want to be seeing. The inside of these rib cages are going to be kind of a glowing red, so keep that in mind when doing your edge highlights. Uh, you might have to go back and redo a few of them. I know I probably will. This is about the time where I start pulling some of those edges 
just for a sanity check. It's okay if you ride up on other areas, don't worry about that too much. And you can see sort of the the light starting to happen with it again. It looks a little bit more bluer through this camera than it actually is uh, in real life. I'm going to mix up a little bit more with my gradient here to have something to go from. Going further. Going into higher highlights now. I'm being a little bit more sparing. I'll probably go all the way over on that top area just to make it bright. Pull an edge down here and there where light would collect. And then one more layer after that. I haven't been counting, so. Pull the edge almost as far, staying inside where our previous layers were. Pull some edge down here in the shadow, just to define those shapes a little bit more. And there you have it. You can, you can take a little bit of this pure uh, off-white and hit dots on corners and stuff. We don't really have any corners here, just those uh, edges. But that gives us our nice uh, non-metallic uh, bolt gun look. Again, blue, lot bluer through the screen. But uh, hopefully that will translate a little bit better in the photos. All right, we've finished up our non-metallic kind of uh, bolt gun. Again, so blue through the camera. It's a much more desaturated. Uh, now we're gonna move on to some copper bits and copper details. So these little leg coverings. The recipe for that is we start with a mix of black and this uh, hammered copper from Reaper Master Series. Uh, so I have a little bit already mixed up here. Again, I was kind of like try to paint stuff. So I have a, an example to show you while I'm talking. And I need to go back through uh, our steel real quick. Kind of showing you the elements and highlights. Same method for the steel to apply this hammered copper. The hammered copper is a little bit of a weaker tone since it is a red tone uh, brown. So you'll need a few more layers to get it uh, up and going. The big difference is we're not putting our highlight directly into our shadow tone. Once we get to this pure uh, reddish brown, we start adding white or, or off white to it in a separate pool to keep the uh, desaturation from happening like it did with our uh, turquoise base. That turquoise base, um, we wanted it to desaturate so that we'd have more of that bolt gun feel uh, to our our metals. So everything that's going to be uh, copper is going to be these leg plates, the little center um, plates here, these are going to be like an emerald sort of green or a dark jade green. Um, we have a few little elements on the weapon that I might hit, still kind of thinking about that. These little um, kind of accentuating shapes on each side of the head around his hood and then through the spine. I'm only going to do the raised bits and on the inside we're going to have that uh, energy, um, so that red energy that's going to be you know, inside the uh, uh, rib cages and in his eyes and stuff. Uh, but as far as talking about the steel, um, ran, running major highlights around the cylindrical objects, you know, you get some of those lines and glints going. Flat objects bleeding the light down the flat object so that the highlight runs at the bottom instead of the top. Treating volumes like hands, kind of uh, spherical in shape, so main highlights concentrated toward the uh, light source and then shadow down below with a few little glints just to show shape down here. Again, fine cast models get a little uh, iffy in the, the details, so painting in some of these uh, highlights to represent finger joints and things was, was done very intentionally. Uh, just trust your brush stroke, so if you want to do a highlight this way to kind of cross the T's, do that even though it might seem small, it will make a difference in how the shape of the highlight 
runs and then doing little bounce lights here and there where the like the feet joints come together you kind of outline the entire shape even though it's in the uh, crevice you don't have to do that if you have uh, limited brush control you can go and just highlight toward the front of the shape it makes it easier um, but for the reddish brown here I'm going to go ahead and put on another layer if you're too aggressive with the layers uh, with this color it will kind of peel itself off the figure because it's it'll reactivate so you need to wait a good bit in between uh, times to dry and then trust that it's going to hit that coppery look because when you're just dealing with the uh, black to the brown tone it's going to look kind of leathery as soon as you add that off-white to that reddish brown you get that nice kind of pink uh, reflection that copper has so I'm gonna go ahead and do one more layer here brushing it a little bit just for an example and I'll add some more highlights on the back side of this. And I might go back and smooth this out. Never can tell exactly what it looks like without getting my head a little bit closer to the model. Just painting on the camera. I can see a little bit. And I don't really start edge highlighting until I get to adding the white. I'm just doing volumetric for now. I got like a booger on there. See that? Piece of fuzz. And this this reddish brown is really weak. It's weaker than the off-white and it's weaker than the black. You have to add a lot of it to the to the respective colors. You have to add a lot to the white and a lot to the black. And you can see you're kind of getting that coppery tone as soon as we add that white. I'm going to finish this up off-camera. I already don't like exactly where it's going. I need to broaden my highlight just a little bit. Um, and then we'll get back when I'm finished with the copper areas. Alright, I broadened out that highlight a little bit. And I want to show you guys the subsequent layers here. I can mess them up again so I can repaint them again. But this is a little bit more of that off-white added. We don't go all the way up to like a pure off-white. stop about halfway up the value scale a little bit slower and more deliberate when we get to some of these edges to define the the shapes a little bit more and you see how that gives it that really coppery look it's cool and then the little bounce shadow back here bounce highlight bounce shadow the hell's a bounce shadow? It's weird. When I'm painting and talking, my mouth will run, but it won't make sense sometimes. And that's about as high as we go up. If you can see that. Yeah, it's right there. Ooh. A wrist cramp. I'm painting all day. That's not normal for me. Must have tweaked it. You can see that coppery kind of look just sings with that nice prominent highlight running down it. And I think that's good. So we're going to hit the, the spine is going to be one of the more intensive parts of it. But just following kind of lead the same way the hoods um, sort of end. I won't highlight each individual square, but I'll lead them into a, a grander idea of lighting when it comes to these objects. 
All right, we finished up the copper areas in here, going in, doing the center of the loincloth, a little crest in the center of his chest, and this almost like librarian-like uh, spine that comes up the back with the little feet that kind of attach to the, the rest of the carapace. So keeping in mind that this is a cylindrical object and that we're going for a highlight kind of in the center, and then we have all these little tiny square objects going a little bit less in the steps, so more like one base coat, and then two highlights after our mid-tone instead of going with uh, you know, three layers of our base coat or our base shadow and then moving up into our highlight after that. Uh, moving on to the green, we're using our Gnarls Green from P3. It's a little bit of a weaker pigment, so it will take two to three coats to get a nice solid base coat on here. It is fairly good for feathering because of that. Um, our mixture in highlights is a little bit of cold yellow from chimera and then are off white again so keeping it from desaturating to a, a point where you, you lose the green and just go more to a white by putting that yellow in our green so it's just a little little dot of green in the mixture and a little dot of our um, off white because of this being a weak pigment it doesn't take much of those two colors to affect it um, here you can see a finished product that maybe needs to be glazed a little bit just to even out these um, these brush stroke areas and to do that we just take a little water add it to our base color just a little bit of water for this stuff and then I can see the blend a little bit better on the camera so I'm just gonna go in and do a light coat like right where that starts and that'll help blend that transition out uh, a little bit better for for those that are getting trying to get a little bit smoother blends but again when you're looking at it from here works perfect. We're going to do all of these little scales on either side of the tabard, the inside of the cloak and the back side of the cloak. So a long process. I'm going to go ahead and base coat all of these areas and you can see applying it, you're getting a lot of primer coming through. That's okay. We'll just need a few more coats to get that to cover. All right, I'm breaking out my sotar for the, uh, the cloak here just to get the green on and a nice gradient across the back and then I can focus on some highlight areas. It's a very very thin down paint so it gives me that control. I'm okay with subtle overages here and there because it'll just be the metal reflecting the greener pigment and then we need some blacks down in here. Keeping my airbrush oriented in this way I don't want to spray up here because I'll lose all my shadows under these scales. You can see it goes on fairly quick as far as a tint. It doesn't get that intensity very quickly, so it gives you that control to build up the color. The Sotar is a 0.15 needle, so it gives you that pinpoint accuracy that you need. I added thinner to the airbrush first and then mix the paint in. If I mix the paint in first, there's a chance that I'm going to get some of that... Uh, pure pigment down into the needle area and it's going to clog up way quicker. So I'm just going to build this up with the airbrush, focusing on higher areas as I go. The inside of the cloak I'll hit just a little bit. We're going to keep it darker to silhouette this model more. We're at a point now where I can demonstrate some more of the green for you. So I'm going to take this band here on the, on the back side of the shoulder. I've mixed up that highlight here. So again, it's just green and then some of that off-white see how much it desaturates that and brings it up super aggressively and then some of this yellow that adds that richness back into back into our green gets rid of that desaturation and again layers basing it on layers so I'm going to do the bottom of that and then the front section of that leaving dark toward the center for a little bit of that non-metallic look or like a shiny stone or ceramite. And then from here, I just add incremental steps of more off-white into that mix. And then inside the last layer. So I can see where my layer stops here. And I'm gonna add my next color for that blended look and then pull away from where I start to, instead of pushing the paint toward it. Right, I don't want my brush stroke to go this way if I can help it. You know, there's always this uh, 
model problems where if you got like a staff or a weapon in the way you have to do it that way but if you can keep it moving away from your your shadow and toward your highlight and then edge highlighting dragging my edges here and there just as I as I complete kind of like blocks or sections of those blocks and then we go up to about this brightness here there's like the previous color we're about there but that previous color is um, edges only for the last highlight You can see on the cloak too, I've been working up with the brush some areas. So keeping in mind shape of individual objects, but at the same time like overall shape because you don't want to just highlight everything in the same manner. You want to keep in mind what the shape of the object is. And if I go up here, match my color, and then do just some edges back here. Edge highlight. That's it. Keeps it in the same value range there. Uh, we're going to finish up this green. There's going to be a lot to do on this cloak, um, but keeping it dark, dark, dark down in the shadows, and then getting it up to this brightness up here on some of these plates as they're like rolling forward in space and into the light. So the staff grip is going to be just kind of a neutral black. We're adding some of our Prussian blue, and then with black and our off white. Um, so just take your Prussian blue, add black, and it'll be pretty dark, and then when you add some of that um, off-white, you get a kind of a dark blue-gray, and then just a volumetric highlight down the front of the staff, following where our previous highlights were. Same thing on the back here, and then we're just going to work it up into an edge highlight as we go. and not go very high with it. It's not meant to be like a reflective section. So. Edge highlights can start fairly thick and just go all the way around. So I'll twist and then do all, all the sections. And you can do the top and bottom. I'm just going to do the top on these. Show it's catching a little bit of light. And add a little bit more. Just around here like that. One more step up. Don't want to get too bright. Get tempted sometimes to go really, really bright, but some areas can be dark. I like that. So you got a nice, it matches that tone a little bit, but it's still kind of a separate object. For the cloak, we finished up um, progressively edge highlighting up toward the top, and then this area that's sticking out, catching a lot of light. So you got that nice kind of glittery, the base is going to be red and dusty, and it's going to get up here in the cloak, so that'll uh, contrast really nicely value-wise with the red and the green. Um, we're going to finish up the staff grips here again just that simple edge highlight and we'll uh, move on to some fun maybe the the energy before we finish things out all right time for the energy um, taking pale yellow as a base coat since it coats a little bit better then using a more saturated yellow getting inside all these nice little rib cages the eyes these two little dots here we're going to treat those as power um, this needs more coats because you can still see the black through it the energy coil here and then I'm probably going to hit this with an airbrush uh, before I you know it makes it a little bit easier then um, in between here all those little uh, power coil things leading up to his head and then I'm taking as you can see in the chest this uh, Cassandora uh, wash and this will be our first step we're gonna dampen down the, the yellow a good bit uh, but this is just the first step in in that 
chain. We're going for a little bit more of a red or orange to red instead of a, a brighter yellow. Um, but we're making that nice and fiery. It does uh, work nicely with the colors that are already there. I want it pooling at either end, not necessarily like all the way across. It's kind of like you know a way to develop a, a value in the in the chest so that your your bright spots are on either side where it's more open. And then in here, you don't have to be too careful. The wash is gonna not affect the um, copper that much, but do try and just hit the right spots. I want it darker down at the uh, base of the yellow so it's going to be brighter toward the, the apex of the cylindrical mm -hmm. shape and it will naturally pull there anyway so they're giving us that really cool energy effect running through the, the neck of the model so I've seen it from the side there it's a really good shot for the Color. I'm gonna do another coat of yellow on this before I hit it with the wash, but then we'll move on to uh, magma draw flame. I believe I'm gonna try it out, see how it works. Adding one more layer of the magma draw, uh, not magma draw. This is the the yellow, the wash, uh, Cassandra. Um, so wait till it's dry, because if it's not dry, it's gonna flow all the way across the the object. But just kind of a dot at the front of each panel and then a larger drip into the back side that just so you got sort of that um, more of a flow these small ones at the bottom can go all the way across if you need to control wise Anyway, we got the orange up there. Still need to do some more coats on this yellow before I start. And then I hit uh, in the eyes. Pretty good, uh, healthy dollop. Um, you can always use your hand and then touch it again. It'll pull the wash out. All right, we're adding in our magma draft now. Um, contrast paint is a little bit thicker, so be careful. Um, what I did here is uh, a dab at both ends and then might want to use contrast medium. I use spit, um, lick the brush, contrast tastes like crap, and then just kind of blended the center so we keep a little bit stronger of a yellowy orange there. Gonna take some Blood Angels red, probably, um, and go just to the very back edges here, and then just dabs under the eye and just kind of pull it along in the eye. Um, still figuring out kind of what I want to do with the weapon. I think I'm going to slab, slather the contrast paint on and then work on blending out some of that more uh, iconic sort of dark Necron energy weapon going. I uh, also need to dab some down in these little uh, cracks, which is fun. But it really does give that nice hot, hot look. If I lick my brush, see I can blend that out. Again, you might want to use medium. All right, trudging along still. I went in and did a base coat of the terracotta just because I wanted to see how the base color was going to shift the interaction of colors that are happening on the model. The upper staff here, been working with a black to orange, uh, almost yellow, like really right on the edge, like a really warm yellow, um, to replicate what the uh, army that I'm painting this for has as far as weapons. Um, so still kind of tweaking with this, trying to make it work well. Um, I'm using a little bit of Scarlet Red, Ferrari Red, not Scarlet Red. If I can find the bottle to show you guys, there we go. Uh, Ferrari Red, uh, I have Cold Yellow here. Again, good, good solid yellow to blend up with. And then working in our magma draft flame, multiple layers in these areas to give that nice warm kind of pulsating look of energy. Still have to work on these. I want the outer areas to be darker than the inner areas. So I'll go in and illustrate how I'm getting these tones in here. Starting with the black, 
uh, sketching in where I want my darker areas to be for the weapons. Necrons kind of have that uh, shifty look of their weapons going between colors. And it takes several layers because I'm using a thin black. I want to be able to blend it on the surface. It'll be a long, long process to watch. Uh, anytime you get any overages you don't like, we use that scarlet red down here. Blend it with the black. And you can come in and see how it gives you that rich tone there. And then eventually we shift it and start taking the scarlet red and adding yellow. And doing edge highlights as well as highlighting the inner parts of these uh, veins that run through the the, the blade here. I'm going to do the same thing here, kind of making it a little bit darker to blend in as it goes up to the, the end of the staff, like the staff might be cooling off a little bit in the blade area. The ball in the center will also have that kind of, it gets hot where it interacts with the other pieces and then will be a little bit darker. Uh, around the outside edges of it to make it look like a kind of a, a ball with contained energy in it. So the problem with always painting uh, black and red or always that you run into while playing black and red is that it's kind of a goopy mixture. The pigments don't like to play well with each other. So it's a trust the process to get any sort of blend in with these. Because if I put, even put it down on my finger you see how it likes to kind of separate into their own respective uh, areas. So you need to be patient, layer it up. It's almost like painting white onto something with how goopy it can be. So going in, glazing, or just re-hitting areas always helps with that blend. I mean, even when it's blended, you get a little bit of that sort of separation going on. And you can see here, like around the bottom, starting to like kind of tack in that yellow. I'm going to put a non-metallic on these areas, sort of similar to his body. I know we've already gone over that, so I won't retouch on that. The wires are going to be just a, uh, a highlight based on the um, highlight that we did on the uh, handle of the staff here. Not looking at really OSL or anything like that, just a simple non-metallic. Continue to work on and uh, give you a few more updates on how I'm dealing with different areas of this staff. Continuing along with the blade here, got both sides. You can see this side's a little bit brighter than this other side. The reason being is I go back with this yellow wash, make sure I give it a good shake. Use it as a glaze to blend those colors back together. It helps just to have those warm tones interacting with each other. You can see how it really does blend that color back into line having a uh, some of those tougher acting tougher to blend colors you want to go back and glaze things or glaze items just to pull everything back in we've done it here it's starting to grow on me as far as the scheme again I'm matching this scheme uh, for somebody and it's, you know challenging to uh, to take someone else's idea and sort of uh, mold it into our, our own sort of vision of the model. I think it will really stand out on the tabletop though with that staff there. Just a nice bright burning uh, target. <laughs> um, unfortunate that uh, painted models are usually the ones that get targeted first. Um, taking some of that red in our, uh, our staff and we're adding it in layers in the base. Getting these soft coating paint using our crescent method to make sure that the front of the base is a little more interesting because of the value shift from shadow to bright. And then we're gonna add some uh, powders to this later to give it that nice sort of dusty, dusty look. So continuing, you know, that, that forward push, make sure the front of the model is the focal point. Um, from here, we have some doodads down here, Mr. Uh, Thief. Um, we're going to do some non-metallic gold and some tan and stuff for some, some towel. Uh, but first, I'm going to go ahead, this same non-metallic teal that we did up here, hit those on the staff, and then maybe wash over them one more time just to tint them in that sort of glowy color. Uh, but I definitely want to get rid of the, uh, the black brackets and make sure that we get a, a good non-metallic on those. We got our non-metallics locked in for these kind of floaty 
bracketed pieces that hold the the staff together. I think I like the stark look of them being different from the little connectors here, the hose and that makes them sort of accent the the staff. Um, so now we're going to move on to these little trinkets, probably the last bit before we finish up the base. We're going to do a non-metallic gold for the the, um, the Eldar trinket there. It'll be mahogany brown, sculpturous brown, and our off-white. So if any of you guys know, I really like this recipe. Probably seen it a hundred times if you watch my videos regularly. Blow in and pop those bubbles. Or dry off my brush. Get out of there. All right. Um, so it is a quick combination for these small areas. Do like a quick mid-tone between our sculpturous and our mahogany. And then we're going to go from the top of the object down. It's a busy day here at Lomo. Lots of stuff going on. And then straight to our sculpturous brown. Which is, I'm working really wet, so it's almost like there's a wet blend happening. Getting heavier with my pigment here. Down right there, we'll go on the underside of these. Let that dry for a second. Mix my sculpturous with some. Some of our friends had baby goats. Off white with our sculpturous. Starting to hit some edges with it. Tracing the shape, just doing the top since these are pretty thin objects. Top and visible, so you can already see that we've already got nice gold non-metallic going. Then just our straight off-white, pick out some points, and there you go. All right, so he's got a little tether here for his uh, his 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 stolen goods. We're using earth. And there is it. Not khaki. Here's an earth and a little bit of the pale yellow. And then we'll take some of this pale yellow and we'll turn it into like a twine by just adding dots. Kind of dots at an angle. That way he's got like a little cord or rope there hanging. Hold this Eldar stuff. And then uh, for the towel, we're going to start with this tan and then work it up with white. Probably be pretty much the only white that we've used in the model. So, let's see. We've got a little bit of little bit of white here. Basically with the whole object. Don't worry about deep shadow in there. Then we got to think like what kind of Maybe like a blue for the ring. That way it works with the armor. I'm gonna need a couple coats of this. And then still gotta figure out. I know I wanna go red with the gym. I don't know, maybe a purple. Something just like super eclectic, you know, just, just doesn't match because it's not his really. And that's okay. You know, it's like it, it looks like a like a awkward focal point for the model. Um, I gotta wait for that to dry, get a couple coats on there and come back. All right, three coats later, also did a little blue ring around with our Prussian blue, and then hit the bottom of this. We're gonna go up from black to do a metal, but gonna do like a more kind of desaturated goldish thing. Maybe this is a dark Eldar sigil or something. I don't know what it is. It's a star of some sorts. All right, so take our khaki from Reaper Terran khaki. Mix a white in there. Go for that towel symbol. So keeping in mind like brush stroke, brush movement, what's going to be left. Kind of naturally shadowed, not edge lit too much. That's what's going through my brain. And then go straight white. 
and go smaller with our brush strokes. So if I see paint like built up on my brush tip and it's not sharp, and I'm looking for sharp lines, I'll go in and train my bristles before I hit the model. Yeah, it looks pretty good for a towel symbol. It is a pretty bright point, but it makes you want to look at it, which is okay. Take some blue over here, my Prussian blue. Grab some white. And we'll do like upper parts of the ring. Again, kind of that, that towel look where it's natural highlights for the, the armor bits. They're pretty edge lit. That's like a natural edge light. Some more, I don't know, pragmatic. All right, the blue works well with the blues that we're seeing in the the steel. It's kind of calmed down on camera. I don't know if it's the reds uh, interacting with it, but earlier in the video, it seemed like that blue was sticking out like a sore thumb. All right, take some of our mahogany. This is mahogany and black. Any black, doesn't matter. And then do the bottom of these guys and just hit the tips. And then we'll take we'll take yellow. If I got a fresh yellow somewhere. I'm taking so many breaks today, everything's drying out. I'll take some yellow in that mahogany. Go for like a brassier. Colder yellow thing. I'm starting to get a headache too. Blech. It's a long day. I didn't eat till like 3 p.m. Treat myself. Treat myself like an artist. It's kind of that feeling anyway. No matter what time of day it is, get to the end of a project. It's like, it's like after running a marathon or something. Not that I run a marathon, but I have run a mile in high school. Like, you know, a few years ago. Highlight it up like that. Maybe start adding some white at this point. That's the off white. Let me get some pure white. We'll go here, color wise. And for for non-metallic looks, you just gotta have that radiation before you can have it be convincing. That purple, there, got some royal purple. Let's go. That tiny, tiny, tiny little dot. We're starting over black. Let's take this a little bit of white. Super simple. I have white in my brush, so I'm just keep adding purple so that I can get my gradient. And then I'm gonna paint the bottom of this gem here. Cover up some of that metallic color on there. The red, brown, yellow, red, brown, yellow. Coming at the bottom over here and give it a little swoop. It looks pretty gemstony. Let me just take some white. Train the bristles. Give it a little boop. See, look. Like that. Gems are easy. Alright. Is there anything left on this guy? I'm gonna prep some powder for doing like the base and stuff on him and get back. So pastels, that's how you do powders. Um, people often buy pastels, they don't know how to use them so they'll chuck them, they hate them. Trick for all you uh, pastel users that watch miniature painting is sandpaper. You draw on sandpaper because it picks up the grit way easier. We're going to use this for basing. Um, so just take an X-Acto knife and just kind of scrub it at a 90 degree angle and you get weathering powder. And a lot of companies will tell you, oh, that's not the right thing. It's like, who are you going to trust? The company trying to sell you something? 
I'm not just some random guy on the internet that says it works. At least you get to see me using it. You see what it's doing? It's layering down in the cracks and crevices. You still need to set it. And what I use to set it is uh, just varnish, just matte varnish it on. I'm gonna cake it up on his feet up here in the cloak. The varnish will knock it down a lot. And that's okay. So we can be heavy with it and layer it up if we want to. I love doing this. It's because it, like, it builds up in the cracks and it's so natural and it still does tone stuff, right? The more you scrub at it, the more it will give kind of a just a tone and the more you just kind of dab and let it fall and you can always just take it and just kind of like blow on it a little bit get it out of there take your airbrush blow it out of the way back here on the cloak that's where it's really going to shine see how it's getting in all those cracks I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to matte varnish it off screen. I can't spray it with all the stuff that I have around here. I will show you the magic. It's like a set. But that orange really interacted really well with the bottom of the cloak there. That Mars look. A nice bright orange too. We're gonna set this real quick and show you. All right, there you go. We've matted it in. Still a little bit wet, still a little bit tacky. Hopefully it'll dry a little bit more matte. If not, I'll hit it with another coat. Hit it with some testers. The Army Painter matte varnish has been a little glossy lately, um, but you can always knock that out. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the ring here. So I need to bring my palette back over. All right. Got my palette back over, got some black on there. We're gonna finish this ring out. Again, I think I'm gonna hit this with some of the testers dull coat. Seems to be one of the most consistent dull coating things out there. But I know this is a little bit different from the normal scheme as far as Necrons go. But really did have fun kind of adapting some pictures I'd post in uh, Facebook group heavier metal as well as you know having my own Instagram and stuff so I might post this in there and then show kind of what I was given as reference and then how I adapted to it so you'll be able to kind of see my process of what I did to to get this going but Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, please feel free, as always, leave some leave some comments. Tell me what you think. Love hearing all the uh, the feedback that you have. Um, keep in mind, this is one of our uh, high tabletop levels, not display or studio, just a model for for play that'll look good on the tabletop. Um, but we've got a new video coming out for Riptide. Um, so a high tabletop Riptide is going to be the next one that they're working on. So I hope you guys are going to stay and watch that. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> um, I hope you uh, have a good Christmas and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.